Chris, what is our fourth main topic today? This one comes from Chase. I don't know about you guys, but I thought episode nine was the perfect second last episode of a season, like maybe ever. All of Otto's planning and scheming comes to a head. Raina's move is epic, and the whole thing felt like a White House thriller drama from the 70s. Anyway, clearly I loved it. What did you guys think? All right, Chase, thanks for sending that in. I keep waiting. I keep waiting for the one bad episode of House of the Dragon to come, and it never comes. It just doesn't come. This episode was unbelievable. Now, again, just to remind you guys, we're not going to go into uh, spoilery details here in case some of you guys haven't seen the new episode of House of the Dragon. We will do that at 3.15 p.m. Los Angeles time a little bit later this afternoon. But, you know, to see, first of all, an entire episode without Rhaenyra, because I don't think we've had that yet, an entire episode without Damon. There might have been an episode without Damon before. I can't remember. We've never had an episode where neither of them are, are in there. So you're wondering, okay, can this show work without those two characters? Because like Matt Smith's Damon is like kind of stealing the, the movie, right? And my favorite character, Viserys, is no longer there. So can they make it work? Oh my God, they made it work. It's so good. This is the episode is the culmination of all the scheming and planning of all this stuff. And it all comes to a head with such a fucking satisfying ending to that episode. And by the way, I always mispronounce this. Is it Rhaenys? Renice. 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 I got to remember that. The nephew, niece, Renice. Yeah. The queen who never was. She is absolutely the MVP of the episode. I mean, this was a great episode to really put a focus that we've not had before on Aegon. Allison, it was really kind of her episode. Um, but uh, again, Renice was like, we said in the last episode, okay, there might, there might not be, like the two best players in the Game of Thrones may be Laris and Renice. They might be the two best players in this. And so that was, and the ending of the episode to me was so ultimately satisfying. And feet. We won't go into details here, but Ann and I are watching this last night and I'm like squirming and I'm like, I don't get it. What is the fascination with feet with some people? But that aside, you know, creepers be creeping. It's okay. You know, whatever. But, oh my God, there are moments in this episode that I'm going to be talking about. For a long time. It was utterly fantastic. I absolutely loved it. And it set up perfectly heading into the season finale. Anyway, Chris, you had a chance to watch this episode of House of the Dragon. What do you think about we it? We go to me right after you talk about a foot fetish. <laughs> God. The Mom, what do you think? Tell me, did this they tell offer you to pay you money to send them pictures of you stepping on food? Someone, the internet, John, the internet <laughs> constantly. And they're so polite. I don't want to kink shame anyone, but it's a... Dear Mrs. Carr, I hope you're having a lovely day. Could you send me pictures of your souls? Would you step on things? And I'm like, no, sir. And they're like, well, ta-da, <laughs> bye-bye. They're so lovely. Um, Good day, however, sir. if anyone, I'll... Jonathan will tell it. <laughs> and I take Venmo, so... <laughs> <laughs> Sonic, if you want it, has a whole different meaning now. <laughs> and get little red shoes and stomp on things But I do you. charge. Just uh, deep, take that scene from last night's episode and deep fake your own feet. <laughs> how do we get to that point, though? How does one deep fake feet? I don't, I don't know, know, but I'm sure it's already been done. Have we ever I... spoken about feet this much on this show? I don't think so. Anyway. Feet. Probably. Mm -hmm. I, I want to know how we got to that point of like, this is the exchange. <laughs> this is what we do. What did you get do to get to this point? I, I will say, and this is an expectations thing, so I, it's not a true criticism or anything. It's just, you know, Game of Thrones conditioned me for the penultimate episode to be a blood be the explosion to be ridiculous and we have bouts of that we have tension we have got a lot of intrigue but this isn't you know a red wedding caliber event that being said excellent episode of seeing how the game does get played out seeing how people react to things and ooh, you gotta listen to that targaryen girl you gotta listen to her and all what she says this is also a good time to remind everybody of my uh reverse only fans uh, that I have running. You put on you more send me You send me $5 a month or else I send you pictures of my bare feet. I just, <laughs> so uh, sign up today, folks. You've been warned. All right, Rob, what do you think about the episode? This was a banger of an episode. And I, you know, somebody, or, or somebody said it reminded them of a 70s, I think our viewer of a 70s political film. 
I mean, this might have not been ending with a bloodbath, but it did end or it began with the death of our king. You know, we saw poor Viserys wrapped up. And we saw this. Now remember, let's not go into big oh, details. No, well, we, well, Put up we the know graphic. He died. He died. Yeah, last, he died at the end of the last episode. Yeah. But I'm just saying is that we saw in the direct aftermath. This episode was tense. Yeah. It was. I mean, I never thought when someone I won't say who someone's being <laughs> led on a street through throngs. Thrilling. Of, I, I was. Like, I, I was holding my. I, breath. I'm like. I'm like. Please be okay. You know. And and uh, I thought this was a beautiful use of location photography and. Um, all over the place because we had we had two groups of uh, two groups of people searching. Such a great. I mean, idea. the whole thing was was great. You you saw. I mean, heartbreaking with two brothers that we just met. One of them's on one. Uh, you know, little civil war going. I on. I I thought this episode was, and it shows what this show is doing that's different than Game of Thrones. I mean, in terms of of it, really is. You've got these. I love the fact that we have two opposing sides. And we're watching these two opposing sides. Battle lines are being drawn, and they've they've taken a long time to build up to this. But now the 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 dam has broken, and the the water is coming in, and we're all going to drown. And I love it. I absolutely love it. And I think that the acting in this show, the kid who plays um, Aegon, not Aegon, um, Amon. 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 He was great. He was great he was episode. great. And his face. I mean, Elizabeth's like. He looks like a comic book villain, like the Joker or something. I love that guy. By the way, there's a line. It, without context, this won't mean to anything to any of you who haven't seen it. But for those of you who have seen it, you know what we're talking about. There's a line in there that I thought gave more depth to the Amon character than anything else has happened. So when the one person looks at him and says, my, you've grown. And then the look, the response of the look on his face versus that person's thing is like, with one little line, I learned so much more about this character's psyche and everything about him. Oh, yeah. It was, my, no, how you've grown. The writing in this show is so smart, and it's so well done. And I, I would imagine you're, we're going to get a little bit more of what you wanted next week. Yeah, for sure. But By the also way, this, this picture, quickly, if you had told me that, you know, they just really felt that the best actor to play the grown-up Amond was Crispin Glover. Yes. And we're just going to de-age him. I would have. I would just straight up believe you. I, don't think I just would. I wouldn't even questioned it. I would have just completely believed it. Yeah. Can I we, mean. Oh. oh, I was just gonna say. Also, can we just once again say, Kristen Cole? I hate your guts. I hate you so much. What a little asshole. Oh, that is. little bitch. I want to give a shout out to the oh. Raymond Dwad. How you pronounce his last name? Uh, his score for last night's episode was Ooh, amazing. Yeah. As they're going through the streets and uh, all dude, that. Oh, it, it was so good. And then. <laughs> One of the more satisfying moments in Game of Thrones history, I think, at the end of this episode. Oh, my God. I I, I was like. Yeah. I mean, I literally stood up. I literally stood up and was like. <laughs> Elizabeth was laughing because I was like, you go. It was so good. Anyway, guys, question is for you. What did you think of last night's second to last episode of Game of Thrones House of the Dragon season one? I absolutely loved it. Again, reminder, a little later today at 3.15 p.m. Los Angeles time, we will be doing our House of the Dragon open spoiler after show. Make sure you guys come on back and join us for that. Guys, we want to take a second to thank the sponsor of this video, Mint Mobile. Mint Mobile offers premium wireless starting at just 15 bucks a month. And now for the plot twist. I'm just kidding. There isn't one. Mint Mobile just has premium wireless from 15 bucks a month. There's no trapping you into a two-year contract or opening the bill to find all these crazy fees. There's no luring you in with free subscriptions to streaming services that you'll forget to cancel and be charged full price for. With my old wireless provider, every month when I opened the bill, it was like playing roulette. I never knew how big the bill was going to be and it always seemed to get bigger. With Mint Mobile, it's totally different. I know exactly how little I'm paying every month and there's never any surprises. Mint Mobile gives you the best rate whether you're buying for one or a family. And at Mint Mobile, families start at just two lines. All plans come with unlimited talk and text plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. And guys, you get to use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts. So transferring over couldn't be easier. So to get premium wireless from just 15 bucks a month and no unexpected plot twists, go to mintmobile.com slash campia. That's mintmobile.com slash campia. You'll make your wallet very happy at mintmobile.com slash campia. 